we're going to look at the final part of the introduction to gas turbine thermodynamic analysis and we're going to look at the uh, engine nozzles so if I have a gas turbine and I look at the entrance to the nozzle and the exit to the nozzle I know from the steady state equation that the enthalpy at position 8 plus the kinetic energy at position 8 is equal to the enthalpy at position 9 and the kinetic energy at position 9 I'm rearranging that equation I get an expression for the kinetic energy at 9 which is the nozzle exit uh, I've shown in a previous uh, video that the change in L temp P is equal to CP times the change in temperature so I can substitute that in and then if we assume that the velocity at 8 here if we if this position if we assume that that's so low you know the, the aircraft has expanded but you know it hasn't got that much velocity yet so if we assume that that's practically zero or is zero we can simplify the e equation for the velocity at the exit to be 2 cp times t8 minus t9 all right so but i want to substitute for cp now i know that the ratio of specific heat capacities gamma is equal to cp over cv and i know that cp minus cv is equal to r um, the universal gas constant again we showed those in the previous videos but if i take this expression here cp by uh, cv i know that cv if i bring this up cv is equal to cp over gamma so i'm going to substitute that in here i can then take cp out of the brackets and I have one minus one over gamma and one minus one over gamma is the same as gamma minus one over gamma so this expression cp gamma minus one minus gamma is equal to cp minus cv which is really r so therefore uh, i can say cp times gamma minus one over gamma is equal to r and rearranging that i have a expression for cp which i can stick into here and that's what i'm left at okay so if i carry that uh, equation forward I multiplied uh, the temperatures here in brackets by R and if I go back to the universal uh, gas law uh, P by V specific volume is equal to RT therefore RT8 by RT9 is equal to P8 V8 minus P9 V9 okay, that's just from the universal gas law so I can substitute those in here and I'm left with that I've taken P8, V8 outside the brackets and I'm left with this inside the brackets. Okay, so that was my last expression. However, we saw also in a previous video that in an adiabatic process, P by V to the power of gamma is a constant. So rearranging this, I can get an expression for P8, sorry, P9 and P8 in terms of specific volumes and just you know taking the gamut root of this I have uh, an expression for V8 over V9 and V9 over V8 which is just the inverse uh, of this one and this goes nicely into this equation here alright if I multiply P9 to the power of 1 by P9 to the power of uh, 1 over gamma so power of 1 is like gamma over gamma uh, so gamma over gamma minus 1 over gamma gives me gamma minus 1 over gamma so this part of the equation simplifies down uh, to this part I'll carry that over onto this slide and if I divide both sides by gamma RT9 now gamma RT is the speed of sound squared as the speed of sound is equal to gamma RT. So the speed of sound at this point here. So divide both seeds, sides by that. I get this expression. But velocity over the speed of sound is really the Mach number. Because Mach is velocity over the speed of sound. So the Mach number squared is the velocity squared over the um, speed of sound squared. Which is this guy. So I can say the Mach number is equal to all of these. immediately the gammas uh, cancel out and I'm left at RT9 here 
Now if I go back to the ideal gas laws, I know that RT is equal to P by V, so I can substitute that back in. So now I have P8V8 over P9V9, which is here, P8V8 over P9V9. Well, we saw just a few seconds ago, or a minute or two ago, that V8 over 9 is equal to P9 over P8 times 1 to the power of gamma. We saw that, saw that back here. We saw that there. So, I can substitute this uh, for V8 over V9. And once again, I P8 to the power of gamma over gamma, multiplied by, P, uh, or divided by P8 to the power of 1 minus gamma. So that's going to give me P8 over P9 to the gamma minus 1 over gamma. Bring this forward to the next slide. And what I'm going to do now is multiply this out. So I'm going to multiply this by 1, and then multiply this expression by this expression. And that's what I have. <coughs> Okay, so you can see here I have P8 to the power of gamma minus 1, 1 over gamma, and over here P8 to the power of gamma minus 1 over gamma. If I divide 1 into the other, I'm going to get 1. And my expression simplifies down to this. At this stage, then, it's just a matter of cleaning it up uh, to just bring the P8 and P9 to one side. So P8 to P9 to the power of gamma minus 1, I brought the 1 across, I'm left at that, and then all I have to do is get the gamma over gamma minus 1 root. And that is an expression for the pressure ratio, the input to the nozzle, to the output of the nozzle. Okay, so at a particular condition, it's called a choked nozzle, and at a choked nozzle, the mass flow is at its maximum, and the velocity is at the speed of sound. So the Mach number is 1, and 1 squared is 1. So let's look at what happens at that condition. I get that expression. So I've basically taken this out. So it's 1 multiplied by all of this, which is just, just this itself. So there it is. So I can simplify that. So 1 is really, I could say 1 is just 2 over 2. So 1 is 2 divided by 2. And now I have fractions with 2. So I can add this on. So I get gamma plus 1. Gamma plus 1 over 2. And if I put the values for gamma for air, uh, which is 1.4, if I put that in, I get uh, a ratio of 1.89 for air. Or if I inverted it, as it is in some textbooks, it's P9 over P8, it's 0.528, which is one way of looking at it. Um, what's nice about this particular one is um, if you know the input pressure to the to the nozzle. So if you know P8, you can determine P9 at Mach 1, i.e. the critical pressure, um, the pressure at which the velocity goes to Mach 1. So P9 just simply becomes um, P9 equal to P8 times uh, this value here. And what's nice about that is <coughs> we'll know that if this pressure is above atmospheric pressure, then the nozzle is choked, and if it is below atmospheric pressure, then the nozzle is not choked, in that the gas has, has expanded back to atmospheric uh, pressure inside the nozzle. Okay, so that's what I wanted to cover here, um, really was to determine the critical pressure. Now, we saw also previous videos that, you know, if I take in an adiabatic process, the the relationship between the pressure and the temperature is, is given by this equation. So uh, rearranging that, I have an expression for P9 over P8. So if that's P9 and that's P8, and that's P9 and P8, uh, I can say that they're both equal to each other. So T9 over T8 to power gamma over gamma minus 1 is equal to 2 over gamma to another 1, gamma minus 1. So I can get rid of the, the powers here and basically say that T9 over T8 is equal to 2 over gamma plus 1. Uh, in other words, the temperature of the air, um, the critical temperature, when the velocity is at Mach 1, when the nozzle is choked, is whatever the temperature at the inlet of the nozzle is, 
multiply by 2 over gamma plus 1. And when we move on now to the analysis of an, of an engine, we can see how that's quite a useful formula to have. Okay, thanks for that.